announcing the arrival of Tansri Asman Hashim, Chairman Asian Banking School. Good morning, Tansri Asman Hashim, Chairman, Asian Banking School, Professor Dr. Colin Gardner, CEO, Asian Banking School, members of the ABS Board and AICB Council, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Asian Banking School, I would like to welcome you all, including those joining us online, to the Asman Hashim Auditorium and the official launch of the Chartered Banker MBA program. My name is Rafiza, and I'm the Director of Corporate Communication at ABS, as well as your MC and presenter for today. Before we begin, may I remind you to please put your phones and other devices in silent mode so as not to disrupt the proceedings. We have quite a bit to go through, but we'll ensure that we finish at noon at the latest to allow enough time for those going for Friday prayers. And now, to get things started, may I invite Professor Dr. Colin Gardner, CEO of the Asian Banking School, to the stage to present his welcome address. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's very, very nice to see people here today. Uh, this is the second occasion we've had to uh, occupy this beautiful auditorium, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to get a lot more use in uh, times ahead. But uh, thank you all for coming today, and thank you also for those people who are following along uh, online. I think we have over 100 people who have signed up to, uh, to follow this proceedings online today. So thank you all again once more for coming. Um, it's a real pleasure to see so many people after all this time. I think we, we've all been sort of locked down for a long time now. And I think uh, uh, talking to some of you uh, just before, you were saying to me how relieved you are to be able to get out of the office, out of your homes, and to see human beings again in a sort of face-to-face -face context. and. Uh, you know, let's hope this is the start of uh, uh, a new new time ahead for us all. So I think we are not out of the woods yet, out of the COVID woods in Malaysia or in other parts of the world. I think in recent weeks and months, there'd been a, a tendency for us all to think that things were getting a lot better, things were easing up, and that we would be uh, moving to a, a more sort of normal situation quite soon. Uh, unfortunately, within the last few weeks, the uh, Omicron uh, variant has caused us to set back a bit. Um, but I'm hoping that this is only a temporary pause on the road to a post-pandemic world. Today's a very exciting day for the ABS team and our colleagues uh, from the AICB. Uh, welcome to them too. Uh, as we get to launch the Chartered Banker MBA uh, in Malaysia. As we'll show during the following presentation, this is a gold standard professional qualification for bankers. This will raise the bar of professionalism. And together with the AICB, we aim to make this as attractive and as affordable as possible. Since I have a, a captive audience, well, at least here in the room, if not everyone online, uh, let me take a few moments to bring you up to date with developments at the Asian Banking School. Each year in September, ABS does a detailed industry survey to try to get a handle on what our banking colleagues wish to see in the training and development space for the upcoming year ahead. I'd like to thank all the HR and L&D colleagues for your contribution to this study, as it is extremely valuable for us in our planning of upcoming offerings. This year, it was made very clear that 88% of all respondents are keen to see a return to classroom training in 2022. And also will be very keen to travel to our executive education programs with the Judge Business School at Cambridge University 
and the CAS, now known as the Bayes Business School at the University in London, where we've run for many years now our Global Banking Leaders program. We are planning a couple of additional programs for 2022 in the hope that people will be able to travel again. One such program will be with the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. They've just been recently uh, elevated to the top 25 business schools in the world. And our relationship with them this year has been spectacular. We've had over 150 Malaysian bankers attending Frankfurt School online programs uh, on sustainable finance and ESG. And what we're hoping to do next year in October is to run a program in Frankfurt with their, their top professors who are also leading specialists in the field of sustainable uh, uh, finance in uh, climate risk change and ESG. So this is an important development for us and we're hoping that we'll be able to see uh, quite a few people from Malaysia attending that school. Uh, at long last, after many years of uh, earache for me, we are planning to produce a, a program for HR and L&D specialists. Uh, we've identified the University of Bologna, Bologna in Italy, uh, the business school there, is the oldest university, Bologna University is the oldest university in the Western world. It was founded in 1088. It was, it's older than Oxford, older than Cambridge, and it's a truly uh, interesting and very, very vibrant uh, university. But they specialize in, at the business school with a, a program for HR and organizational development, a master's program that really is world renowned. And so what we've done with them is to look at various modules from this particular master's program and identified a, a, a one week program that looks at some of the latest developments in HR, looking at uh, how uh, artificial intelligence and other, other interesting sort of new developments uh, will be impacting the HR and L&D uh, industry in the years ahead. So this is a program that in fact only last evening we managed to uh, conclude with them uh, a, a, a transaction that will happen uh, subject again to traveling in uh, October, no, no, September of next year. So in September next year, we're going to have a really, really interesting program for all you very senior HR directors and L&D people. Uh, I need to point out that Bologna is only a short distance from Milano. Uh, it's not that far from Venice. Uh, it's not that far from Florence. <clears throat> so. I think there's a good opportunity for people not only to sort of find out a bit more about HR, but also to do a little bit of shopping in Italy. I'll just take a little water to make sure that I don't sound croaky and give you all the fear that there's something unfortunate going on. I think realistically, we have to understand that this is all very, you know, this is all very good to look ahead and it all is subject, of course, to us being able to travel. Um, but we have to be realistic also as uh, uh, the ABS in anticipating that e-learning and virtual classroom training with blended classes, mixing online with face-to-face -face will become the new normal uh, in the years ahead. And at ABS, we're now well equipped to respond to this trend. Well, I'm sure if we could all turn the clock back, we'd all choose to avoid the traumas, disruptions, personal tragedies of the last two years. I, I suspect there's not a single person in this room, or indeed even online, who hasn't personally had some uh, involvement, some something that's affected their lives uh, due to this dreadful disease. Uh, but out of adversity, sometimes there are elements of, of positivity. Now, for ABS, we were put in a position in the middle of well, March 2020, where we could see that in the months ahead, we would have no income. In fact, for five whole months during 2020, uh, ABS had no income whatsoever. And during that time, we were faced with a very bleak future. However, during that time, we were able to convert pretty much all of our content into online 
materials. And that was an incredible step. It was an incredible thing to be able to do it in such a short space of time, to take everything that we did in the classroom and transform it into a, the ability to deliver it online. Um, the FSTEP program, which we, as you know, we run, uh, has trained over 200 graduates during 2020 and 2021. Almost all of it has been online. So we, we've managed to adjust. This transformation not only uh, allowed us to survive in 2020, and I have to say we would not have survived without the support of our board and the STFR, and, and uh, I think we all owe a great deal of thanks to our chairman for the support that he gave us during this time. But I'm really pleased to tell you that in 2021, ABS has once again achieved a positive surplus, surplus to maintain our focus on long-term sustainability. This is actually an incredible achievement. There are not many organizations faced with the difficulties that uh, we are all facing that have been able to achieve such a result in 2021. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the ABS team uh, who have worked incredibly hard during the last 18 months uh, to achieve this. And I think, uh, I think you know, we all are, are very indebted to their dedication and professionalism. And I, I really am very proud of uh, my team. Turning now to the Chartered Banker MBA degree program. Unbelievably, over 10 years ago, I was a founding member of the team at the Bangor Business School that worked with colleagues uh, and the Chartered Banker Institute to develop what was and still is a unique postgraduate degree that combines an MBA with a Chartered Banker qualification. A degree, a postgraduate degree, that is totally focused on the banking profession. Over 10 years, it's been in existence it has become recognized as the global standard qualification in banking and is in increasing demand around the world with rising numbers each year. Now, as a result of the pandemic, the CMCB MBA is available fully online for the first time. Uh, until this time, it was a, a, a program that required attendance at uh, seminars, at workshops, uh, in order to complete the qualification. That is no longer the case. And this has made it extremely attractive for us here in Malaysia. And in the next 30 minutes or so, we will be providing you with some of the considerable benefits that we've been able to secure for those who wish to take this qualification. We will also share with you one of the best kept secrets in the academic world. And that is why the Bangor Business School is one of the most prestigious specialist banking and finance business schools in the world from which to take a postgraduate banking qualification. As Rafisa says, as it's Friday, we will be wrapping up the presentation promptly today at midday. Uh, however, for those of you who still have questions, uh, we'll be available outside the auditorium for however long it takes. We'll be there to speak with you. You will also have noticed that Maybank and Ambank staff are also here to discuss funding op options that they have generously agreed to make available to those people who will be interested in funding themselves for this particular qualification. The Asian Banking School, along with our sister organization, the Asian Institute of Chartered Bankers, have a joint mission to raise the standards of professionalism across the banking industry here in Malaysia. As we progress with this purpose, we will also be reaching out to our neighbors in Southeast Asian countries where we may be able to collaborate with them too, as the Chartered Banker MBA is a truly global program for senior professional bankers. Here in Malaysia, both the ABS and the AICB are fortunate to be guided in our separate tasks by eminent banking professionals who form our respective board of directors and the council of the AICB. Both the ABS Board and the AICB Council are extremely fortunate to have as our Chairman Tan Sri Asman, one of Malaysia's most highly regarded and respected bankers. Tan Sri Asman throughout his long career in the industry has been a huge supporter of education and training, as well as showing strong commitment to professional standards and behaviour. It's now a great pleasure 
for me to introduce our chairman today to formally launch the Chartered Banker MBA program here in Malaysia. So with that, may I ask our MC Rafiza to welcome Tan Sri Asman to the stage with a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Colin. May I now invite our guest of honor, Tansri Azman Hashim, Chairman of the Asian Banking School, to the stage to present his official address. Tansri, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wow, sounds loud here. <laughs> louder, than, louder than Colin, huh? Okay. I think you need a singing voice, like Colin. <laughs> Professor Colin Gardner, CEO of Asian Banking School, my fellow colleague um, on the AICB and ABS Council, uh, Donald Jaganathan. By the way, a very passionate and strong supporter of both AICB and ABS. That's why he's here this morning. Thank you, Donald. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. It gives me great pleasure to be with all of you for this launching of the Chartered Banker MBA program. Now, by the way, uh, to me, it's, it's quite a milestone in the sense that the, this, this function, uh, I thought it was a, this is a second official function to be had in this auditorium. And of course, I'm, the first one was the other day with the ministry, but of course I'm very uh, lucky that uh, I happen to be the host for the two functions <laughs> in this auditorium. <laughs> uh, so for me, it's a milestone. So thank you for making it a great event. <clears throat> like many others these days, the, this event is being held a uh, hybrid style face-to-face -face and <laughs> live online at the same time. So whether you are here or somewhere else, thank you for joining us. And for those viewing, <clears throat> visiting us for the first time here in this building, I would like to especially welcome you to the ICB building, which we're very proud of. By the way, we want the uh, architect profession's uh, top price of the, of the building design, I think, which is great. <clears throat> With the global pandemic, when it hit us, all of us found ourselves having to rethink <clears throat> our day-to-day -day and what we thought was uh, normal. The need to be safe and socially distant, so many of us confined to our homes where we lived and worked and continued to make the best of things for <clears throat> as long as, needed, as was needed. <clears throat> With life under lockdown and SOPs to follow, Going online was the, the only way that we could communicate with each other uh, <clears throat> when physicality is not possible. Equally affected were institutions like ours, learning institutions around the world, who found themselves having to make their programs to go virtual on virtual platforms so that they can continue to teach. It was within this setting that the Asian Banking School uh, found itself <clears throat> uh, aligning uh, what was offered and also at the opportunity to collaborate with some other learning institutions in which uh, to offer programs that could be delivered fully online. So it made us make that, <coughs> that move. 
the Chartered Banker MBA, I think in brackets, Banking and Finance, uh, <clears throat> by the renowned Bangor Business School in the UK, uh, I think Professor would like to say in Wales especially, <laughs> uh, is one such program. This collaboration with the Bangor Business School to offer the Chartered Banker MBA is an important milestone for ABS and EICB in its efforts to engage the banking learning landscape, <coughs> to change the landscape through industry relevant and innovative programs. <coughs> Modular in structure with courses focused on banking and finance, <coughs> the Chartered Banker MBA is the only degree in the world with dual qualifications that allows you uh, to gain a top MBA, um, the top MBA and the Chartered Banker status at the same time. Ranked in the world's top 10% institutions and economists in the field of banking, this unique degree that will be delivered fully online and allows for busy professionals to study at, at their own time. The introduction of Chartered Banker MBA is also significant for the EICB. <clears throat> it adds uh, further value to the EICB membership position and allows its Chartered Banker holders to take another step <clears throat> further in their learning pathway. This uh, coveted status where they hold is combined, is combined with their work experience in the industry, gives them uh, valuable uh, cost exemptions that leaves them, gives them the opportunity to achieve the MBA in as little as 12 months. So that's quite great. You can, you can get your MBA in 12 months, uh, of course, after you get your uh, Chartered Banker CB qualification. Ladies and gentlemen, together with the launching of the Chartered MBA program, I'm pleased to announce that uh, Maybank, together with MBank, will be supporting this program uh, by offering financing and credit facilities to those uh, who want to self-fund their studies. Mm, I think we're looking at some scholarship as well, I think, at the ESCB level, but uh, uh, not loudly yet. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> but I think, uh, I must say, Donald's the one that's pushing this. He look, come on, uh, ESCB and the fund, you know, I think we should give some scholarships uh, for, for this type of thing. Not just for this, but for the future things as well. Uh, okay, just to mention that. <coughs> Together with other payment options uh, already available, I'm heartened to know that those interested in the program will be given every opportunity to continue their learning journey. Uh, by the way, uh, <coughs> Colin did mention just now about HR. Uh, I think he's working with this very famous university in Bologna, Italy. And uh, especially that's very focused and very good on HR. Already you got people interested, Colin. One of them is uh, Lam Su Yan here. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, actually, to mention HR is uh, HR in Malaysia, we, we know, I think, in the banks, we know, you know how short they are you know, to get HR people. It, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, and to get that MBA from Bologna, you know, one of the oldest universities in the world, and they, they are famous for HR. And hopefully the college can work out a 12-month thing or so. Huh? 
12 months and then your MBA from Bologna and HR. So quite a lot to look forward to. So <laughs> just to mention that, I think that's great. <coughs> <laughs> so I'd like to congratulate ABS on the collaboration with the Bangor Business School and hereby officially launch the Chartered Banker MBA program. Thank you. Thank you, Tansri Chairman. Very funny. And thank you for the mention about the HR as well. Yeah, we have Lam Sui and number one registered. <laughs> and I think there's a few more in the rows already, a little more excited than that as well. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, to provide you with more details about the Chartered Banker MBA program, we have prepared an information deck that we would like to present to you today. But first, let's have a look at the video we created for the program.
now that now that you've seen the video, we'll get into more details on the program now that the PowerPoint is up. Test. So ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I'll be your presenter for today as well. So this image is of Bangor University. Um, Colin says there's sunny days every day, but we don't believe him. So I think they got one chance. It was a sunny day and they took a photo. So we're using it forever. <laughs> so a little bit about the program, the Charter Banker MBA, was created in 2010 by the Bangor Business School in partnership with the Chartered Banker Institute. It is the only degree in the world with dual qualification that allows you to gain a top MBA and a Chartered Banker status, which is, as mentioned many times earlier, the highest professional designation available to bankers worldwide and the gold standard for banking qualification. The Bangor Business School is the only institution in the world able to offer the Chartered Banker MBA and there are now over 1,000 Chartered Banker MBA holders in 100 countries. So we're counting on you to be 1,001 and more. But first, where is Bangor? I think it's mentioned before, but I'll, it, you know, it's good to repeat it. It's located in the UK in the beautiful scenic North Wales. So I think some of you will recognize the dragon on the flag. Um, and the castle over there is Conway Castle. And I hope I get this right when I say that there are more castles in Wales than any single country in Europe. Did I get that right? OK. So you see an image, it's Snowdonia in winter, and again as well. So um, something to look forward to as well. You never know. A little bit about Bangor. Bangor University was established in 1884 and is the first in the world to offer a degree in banking. We have somebody who's graduated from there amongst us, my colleague Professor Bala, so if you want to know more about that, you can talk to him as well after this program. Bangor Business School was the first learning institution in the UK to be designated a Centre of Excellence by the Chartered Banker Institute. It was listed as one of the world's most influential business schools by the Financial Times. And it bears repeating is ranked in the world's top 10% of institutions and economists in the field of banking and is ranked highest of all UK universities. This means that Bangor and its banking faculty is the highest of all UK universities, higher than Cambridge, higher than Oxford. The program is delivered two intakes per year in April and October. We're starting with our April intake next year. And due to the pandemic, the programs have all been brought online. So this is an opportunity for us to be able to offer it to you. So it's fully online and you have access to study guides, textbooks, online tutorials, revision workshops, very important before exams lectures and each and every student is designated their own personal tutor throughout the learning journey. The, the pathway that we really talked about and want to emphasize, the super accelerated program. Sounds like Superman and you know all the superheroes. So you're kind of a superhero, you get to finish within 12 months. So the fee is 73,000 73, ringgit, but Remember that fee, because I'll talk later about our favorite word, discount. <laughs> it is. <laughs> for compulsory modules only. So an example of that would be for one option, you take professional ethics and regulation and financial institutions risk management for one semester. For your second semester, you take financial crisis and regulation credit and lending. And I think for many of the bankers in the room and online, you will go, hey, I do that every day already in the banks. So shouldn't be a problem for you, I think. The second example, that you, the second set of compulsory modules would be professional ethics and regulation. Human resources, organizational behavior for one semester. Second semester, financial crisis and regulation and corporate strategy. 
the entry requirement, professional, bachelor's degree, and a professional banking qualification, such as your AICB Charter Banker, from approved institution together with a sus substantial post-qualification managerial experience, or by experience, bachelor's degree, and at least 10 years of senior executive level banking experience. So I mentioned earlier, 73,012 months, a huge difference from if you were to start from scratch, the full program takes 48 months, oh wait, 24 months, so I just added on more for us, <laughs> 24 months, and you have to do eight compulsory and modules and four elective modules at a cost of 105,000. So without our favorite discounts, it's still a significant saving. This is more, I think, better suited for the younger charter bankers, the younger bankers, who don't have quite the same amount of many years of senior level banking experience. So this is the accelerated program for banking professionals. The difference is 18 months instead of 12. The fee is 86,000 ringgit. And we've already agreed and negotiated with Banga that AICB charter bankers are eligible straight away for a 5,800 ringgit discount. So discounts come, and there'll be more discounts after this. Six compulsory modules, two elective modules. You just need to have your charter banker, your qualification, and you're on your way. So they've given suggested groupings for you to have an idea of what kind of programs you'll be doing. The red is the compulsory, so human resources, organizational behavior, marketing strategy, one semester. Second semester, research methods, credit and lending, corporate strategy. And for your last third semester, professional ethics and regulation, and two electives of your choice. The description and the explanation about these individual programs and the electives available are in the brochure that my colleagues will hand out to you as you leave. And for the accounting professionals amongst us, and there are many in the banking industry, we also have an accelerated program for you. Same, 18 months, the fee is 86,000. The difference, four compulsory modules and three electives. So you need an approved professional accounting qualification, such as your ACCA and SEMA, and you're on your way. So similar, but you take professional ethics and regulation, financial institutions, risk management one semester, research methods, credit and lending your second semester, and your last semester, the electives of your choice. Some of the topics they have for modules include financial crime, include fintech and banking technology. So there's quite a lot of things that might appeal to you and for everyone, I think. This is the library in Bangor, a little bit like the library here in AICB building, once it has lots of books come in. So, <laughs> see, I'm laughing, sorry. So all students will be enrolled onto a study skills module. So for all of us who feel maybe a little bit rusty and nervous that we have to start studying after a long time, don't worry, there's a study skills module to help you on your way to studying again. Okay, assessments and exams. That's the question that we always get asked. I see a lot of camera phones coming out now from the audience taking photographs. We want, I want to spend a little bit more time on this because the, each person has their own different concern about what is important. But it, you know, the summary is it's access with a 2,000 word for compulsory modules. You have a 2,000 word assignment and a two hour examination at the end. The weightage is 40, 60 respectively, and the passing mark is 50% cumulatively. So the kind of exams you have, now that we mentioned online, is computer-based and invigilated remotely two hours with 20 minutes reading time. Your exam format varies because some are multiple choice, some are both with essays, and some are just essays. So online revision session will be held before the exams for you to make sure that you're up to par before you do your exams. You have access to a test version of the computer-based exam platform. Past papers will be made available to you, a 
very important and we get asked that a lot. But if for some reason a circumstance allows or makes you fail, a student has failed an exam, they can reset the paper at a fee of £1,000 each time, up to three attempts. £100. Did I say £1,000? Oh, I'm making money for us every day. So <laughs> we have a surplus <laughs> for next year. £100 each time, up to three attempts. Not too bad. Exams are arranged on one day globally. It used to be at 2 p.m. UK time fix, but now they understand different people, different regions of the world. So the exams are arranged sometime based on the region and between 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. UK time to make sure they have people on hand to help you. Elective modules that I mentioned earlier, they're more like a consulting base, so they're it's like a consulting sort of module, so it's project-based, and you just have a 3,500-word assignment at the end of the semester. Okay, I, I said about discounts. So payments, of course, a question everybody asks. Corporate-sponsored students, STF claimable. Online payment via ABS website. We're in the progress of applying for the HRD Corp claimable as well. And once that's approved, we'll update you. Corporate discount. 20% discount off the headline fee. So when full payment is made at the start of the program, you get 20% off. There's no deadline for this and no minimum number for any of the banks and financial institutions sending. So the example, 73,000 minus 20% is 58,400 for you to sponsor. Not bad for self-funded students. The list is long because we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to be able to take up this program, you know, and make it as easy as possible for them. Monthly installments or pay per semester or module with Bank of Business School, EPF account to withdrawal for Malaysians and non-Malaysians. Below 55 years old, you can take out from account two. If you're over 55, 55 and over, we know, you, they're not really limited by the amount. 0% credit card interest installment plan with MBank. Thank you, MBank. Term loan facilities with flexible repayment schemes with MBank and Maybank. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank as well MBank and Maybank making arrangements for this facility, the credit facilities, the loan facilities, to make it available to all who would like to take up this program. They've custom made it for us, so it's become, it's really good. So, you know, check out their booth, get the information from them before you go as well. Discounts, for self-funded students, there's an early enrollment discount. For those who apply and pay the 2,500 ringgit deposit, non-refundable, before the deadline for the April intake is 28 February 2022 and then the balance of the fees will be discounted by 10 percent this is where you decide whether you want to pay monthly you want to pay semester or but if you decide you want to pay in full you get an additional five percent so that's a significant saving how to apply applicants are encouraged to get root eligibility confirmation from ABS before registering. You do this by submitting your updated CV so we know your work history, copies of your transcripts and certificates, and we'll put it together and we'll work with you to make sure that what you're putting together is perfect and allows you to get the route that you like. So we'll try our very best. So once your root eligibility has been confirmed, the applicants or the banks can apply for the program through the ABS website. No money yet. Sounds good, right? So then ABS will submit your application to Bank of Business, Business School for their further review and then finalization. And then admission letters will be issued once accepted and fees will then be notified. That's when the money part comes in. So. I encourage everybody, so while you feel that, oh, maybe I only have nine years and not ten, don't feel hindered by that, you know? 
work, we'll work with you to make sure that your accumulative experience is accounted for and recognized to get the pathway that you want to be on. With that, I'm done. So I hope this is as informational as possible. So we we'll open the floor to some questions. Uh, but before we do that, let me invite our resident expert on whales and banger and all sorts of things to come on stage to help answer questions as well. There are microphones um, on stands. There are people, friends and colleagues who can hold them for you if you have any questions. Alternatively, of course, if you want to email us and contact us privately, the email address is here, of which we will also send copies of the slides. It looks like we're a double act. You know, we're going to start singing in, in Welsh. <laughs> I can do some tap. <laughs> so some of you may have noticed a few words that you didn't truly sort of recognize. Um, that's because it's the Welsh language. And I should say to you that uh, a lot of the students, international students who come to Bangor University, love it there because it feels a little bit like being in a foreign country because it's a dual language uh, location. So even though all the instruction is in English, most of the signage and a lot, of, and when you're in the streets and when you're walking around the town, you will hear a language that is not English. And a, a substantial number of people, uh, in fact, in, in that part of the world, speak Welsh as their main language. It's not well known, this. Um, population of Wales is only about three million people. So there's probably fewer people in Wales than in the whole of Kuala Lumpur. Um, but we do have our own language, and uh, it is a live language, and it's used. So when I was, uh, when I was at Bangor, I was the CEO of the, of the business school there. I used to have to make introductions before any speech in, in Welsh. So I would say, Croeso, Gnauban, Rialoid, Prabascol, Bangor, which basically means welcome to the uh, business school, the management center at the University of Bangor. Um, after that, you'd, I'd revert into English, of course. Um, but you, you can see it from some of the slides that it's a truly magical, beautiful part of the country. Uh, Wales has something like 800 uh, miles of coastline. And uh, over the last 20 years or so, a pathway has been uh, built around the, the coast so that if you're energetic enough and you have enough time, you can walk 800 miles around the entire <laughs> And so for those of you who fail the exams, you will have to walk the 800, 800 miles. miles. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a lovely part of the world. And uh, the university is, uh, it needs to improve its marketing, I would say. And I'm sure some of my colleagues in Wales may be listening to this online now. And I, I'm not saying anything today that I wouldn't have said before. And that is, you know, that this business school is probably the leading banking and finance business school in the world. Um, it shocks people when we say to them that uh, the Bangor economics and banking uh, faculty is um, more, more reg highly regarded by the people who do the uh, rankings than any other university in the UK. Uh, that's a very significant statement and it ought to be spread much more widely. But, you know, academics are not marketing people generally and they concentrate on doing their jobs, and they do it extremely well. But we're very, very lucky to be able to have developed this program with the Chartered Banker Institute. It's been running now for about 10 years. I remember the first year it ran, we, I think we had like 30 people, and uh, we, we wondered whether it was ever going to be successful or not. But over the years, it has become really highly regarded and well, well patronized. I think there are well over 1,000 people now around the world who are taking this qualification. So there are 530, I think, chartered banker qualified um, members of the AICB. So, you know, we're really hopeful that we might be able to boost that number up for the university, but also for, for Malaysia, because it truly is a very, very substantial and highly regarded qualification. If your career is in banking, then this is definitely a qualification that is well worth having. Um, we, we also want to make the point about the accounting professionals, because we do know that there are many 
many accountants involved in, in banks uh, in Malaysia, uh, not necessarily just in the sort of back office, but you know, in the corporate finance field, in the investment banking area, there are plenty of people who are qualified accountants who are actually also practicing bankers. And so for them, this is also an opportunity to sort of, uh, you know, substantiate some of their uh, qualifications and commitment to a career in banking and finance. So uh, we did say that we were going to finish promptly at midday. So that gives us a, a few minutes now for some questions. We have a very nice brochure that we will give you as you leave. Uh, and I think uh, I also want to just say thank you to uh, the very substantial um, uh, corporate communications department at ABS and that uh, they did a phenomenal job uh, with that um, video and the, the, the substantial uh, corporate communications department is there and, <laughs> and then... <I'm> me, there <laughs> that's thank it you. so those two between them made that uh, corporate video which I <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so Question. questions. Okay, microphone to the lady in lime green. Thank you. I, I got a few questions. Uh, actually, I studied, I did my degree in Cardiff, so I'm quite familiar with Wales. Oh, in Cardiff. Where? In Cardiff. 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 Yeah. Unlucky. So, <laughs> <laughs> they got castles too. So. Cardiff is in <laughs> South Wales. Um, yeah. which is actually the most populous part. And Cardiff is a lovely city. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I, I got a question on the modules for the chartered banker. If I'm already a chartered banker, yeah. I saw your modules just now, the SAP 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. It looks like the syllabus is quite similar to chartered banker. Do I need to repeat it? Because you got the FX and also you got the credit lending there. Let me go back. and. So if you're a chartered banker... Well, uh, in Malaysia, yeah, the yeah. AICB Chartered Banker qualification, sure. And you've got more than 10 years banking experience, which yes, I suspect correct. you may well have, then you're eligible for the 12-month uh, pathway, which means that after taking the, the, two, the four modules, you will become an MBA and a, a Chartered Banker of the UK Chartered Banker Institute. So you will have dual professional qualifications, the AICB qualification and the Chartered Banker UK qualification. Like for me, for example, I'm a fellow of the Chartered Banker Institute, the UK one, but I'm also a fellow of the what was the original Institute of Bank Lombard Street Institute of Bankers. So, you know, you, you will have double professional qualifications and the MBA. Oh, okay. So it's like double degree kind of thing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. And the next question that I have, is there any elective uh, modules like sustainable finance yes. or something like that yes. that I can also yes. pursue? Yeah. <coughs> For the super accelerated program? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we've asked this question. We have a colleague, Dr. Vijay, who's going to be our test sample. <laughs> we've asked, because he's interested, his area is fintech and banking technology. So there is a possibility and it's case by case basis for you to make one of them an elective of your choice, we have to just justify and show your level of experience and the area that you want to do. It's a possibility. Yeah. Oh, that's great because that's two topics that I'm quite interested in. Oh, okay. Yeah. The fintech <laughs> and also the sustainable okay. finance. Well, we, I'll work with you. Don't all right. Worry. We'll, we'll sort <laughs> thank it <you>. out. <laughs> that's all from me. Oh, thank you. Are there any more questions? Maybe not. So, I mean, one of the things that we would like to say in, uh, in the context of your question, and that is that the university is quite flexible and I think, and is working with us kind of like on a tailor-made basis. As you can see, the, the deal that we've done with them is very different from anything that's available anywhere else in the world. And uh, so we have such a good relationship that we're in the process of saying, questions like this, look, if someone wants to do the module on sustainability and ESG and climate risk, can we substitute it for something that they may not want to be doing, such as maybe you don't want to do credit and lending, for example. We've already done that, so you don't need to do it again. So we, 
we do believe that, I mean, we're not going to be able to do it every single time, but I think when there's enough demand and there's in, in one row two people who've already sort of I highlighted this, then I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to sort of be accommodated. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh, question. Oh. It's okay. Here Just comes. in this, this room. Yes. You might need to answer these because I can't see. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi, Professor Gardner. We meet again. Um, I'm Amina, and I have a question on the entry requirement. Yeah. I do not um, satisfy any of the entry requirements of the um, all three pathways. Um, but I would like to ask whether there would be a consideration of um, maybe a little bit of a, a like a pre-program or a, you know like a foundation yeah. to consider people like me who have different qualifications. So I have a bachelor degree of accounting and finance yep. from Melbourne University, yep. an MBA from Ohio, and a PhD in performance yep. from Curtin. And I have had, subs uh, well, my, my, my corporate uh, experience started with a bank, Arab Malaysian Corporation. Yep. So then I moved on into academia, mm -hmm. and then I moved out and back. I'm in, back in corporate right now, serving Yaya Fantanaraju before this touch and go. So I've got like a probably a different kind of a experience compared to the typical banker, but I'm pretty much very much up to date. So that's um, my question here. Would you uh, actually have assessments to see the fit, um, you know, whether I could actually come into a program because, you know, MBA, having a second MBA is something I would like to do. Um, but honestly, I actually looking at your neighbor, <laughs> but it's just that it's a little bit too expensive over there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm pretty much very attracted to actually do an MBA next door. Yeah. But when it's like six figures, it's a little bit too much. At my age, I, I wouldn't find a sponsor for, even for my husband. So yeah. <laughs> well, so that's my question. Thank same, you. Same alphabet, but moved around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we can definitely figure out a way to it. Actually, I mean, I'll work with you, and then I think mm, we might be able to make a case for you to be eligible for super accelerated program. <laughs> okay, this one row is signing up to mo today. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Our, our approach basically is to, to take everybody who's interested in applying and working with them to create for you an application that we will then push with the university. And, you yeah. know, every now and again, we might have to call in a few sort of favors with the university. But that's one of the advantages that we have with Bangor Business School, that, you know, I'm a fellow of the university. Most of my good friends are still there, and uh, I'm sure or deserving cases that there will be a, an opportunity to sort of say, okay. So, yeah, yeah I, w I wouldn't worry. Thank you. I think, I mean, in looking at the time, I think that's all the time we have It for is, today. really, because we, we, we did attend uh, a, a meeting some time back, which was virtual, but it, it should have ended at midday. It didn't. It went on and on and on and on, and it was a little bit sort of painful because many people needed to get to the Friday prayers. So we made it very, very clear that 12 o'clock is it. But we are going to be outside. There'll be more coffee and refreshments and things. So please stay around. And we'll be there. And some of my colleagues will also be there to answer any questions you may have. And I would just say one more time, it's great to see people here. And I'm hoping in 2022 we get the chance to see more of you on a regular basis. Uh, I have some meet some friends here I like to lunch with from time to time, and we haven't done that now for about 18 months, so I'm hoping we'll be able to do that again quite soon. Okay, so Wait. thank you all very much. No, not yet. Oh, <laughs> not yet, not God, yet. Okay. we haven't finished. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's why I'm the MC. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm off the stage. And that's why he's taking the mic away from him. Before we go, I'd like you to take a quick look at the magic of Bangor for the video that they produced. It's just really quick, like a half a minute. So please enjoy.
magical is happening in North Wales. Since 1884, inspiring people in magical places have been coming together to learn, to discover, to change lives and make a difference to the world. Now that you've seen the magic of Bangor, I hope you enjoyed the video and are now inspired to sign up for the program. Thank you to our guest of honor, Tansri Azman Hashim, for officiating this event and for joining us in celebrating this program. Full program details are now also up on our website under professional qualifications. And do make sure you get copies of the Chartered Banker MBA brochure as you leave. And slides can be made available to you. you just get in touch with us. So stop by at MBank and Maybank booths before you go as well.